we trade because of there's value. And if the stocks are sitting in the middle of their ranges, you have no, you're not, you're not in this for a 50-50 shot, right? You're not in this and say, well, the stocks either go or it's not. No, that's not the way it works. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. So let's kind of review from yesterday. Uh, we talked about the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, uh, putting in an inverted hammer, which is a short-term uh, negative. Doesn't mean the market's gonna go to the lows, doesn't mean it's gonna go to the uh, pan pandemic lows. It just means it's a short-term uh, sell signal that the market high probability will go to its next demand zone. And that's exactly basically what happened today. You had a day two of selling and we went through the 10 day moving average pretty quickly. Uh, in the morning, we went all the way down to the 20 day moving average. And just like all bull markets, it's structural, right? And that's all it is. Uh, you, we, you don't need to have uh, a throw the baby out with the bathwater scenario to kind of be proactive in, in, in potential selling pressure. And what we saw uh, yesterday, what we saw uh, we were prepared for uh, today going to today's session is, is just day two of high probability selling uh, coming into the session. Uh, now that you're getting more and more people, and it was pretty evident this morning, now that you're getting uh, more and more people starting to go on their um, Thanksgiving a holiday. You saw the volume this morning, very, very weak volume. Um, you saw the spreads this morning, really, really widespread. And, it's, and, and that's just goes to show you that participation in the market is everything. So when people are talking about this market is, is uh, driven by algorithms, it's false. Okay. It's absolutely false. Yes. The, do algorithms have a huge um, role in market structure? Absolutely. Does the R2, D2, C, 3PO society uh, control a lot of the volume that you see? Absolutely. But a stock doesn't tr trade at a 50, 70, uh, a dollar spread because R2, D2 is involved. It's there because market participants are lagging. That's exactly what we saw today. At one point, we saw Tesla trading today at a dollar, dollar and change spread. That's not a normal thing. That's caused a lack of market participation. We saw the same thing at the open today. Uh, Google at some point was trading with a $6 spread, right? That has nothing to do with algorithms, okay? And it's market participants not there. So we're going to uh, see probably the same type of scenario going into tomorrow's session. And I'll be honest with you, if, if you don't see uh, any value tomorrow by like lunchtime, you just call it a day, you know, call it a day. Tomorrow's me, uh, today and tomorrow, the two busiest, uh, travel schedules of um, of the holiday season, and you know the market has been absolutely phenomenal, incredible action. People are just decompressing, and, and I've said this today in the webinar. You don't need to you, you don't need to go nuts every single day. Be a better friend to yourself, right? Once in a while, just take a deep breath. The market's been really strong both sides of the aisle, but especially on the bullish side, you're getting terrific value most days. Sometimes, hey, listen, you know the market. You know, less volume, bigger spreads, blah, blah, blah. The continuity is there and that the theme is not really there. Just throw in a towel. Say, look, let me see what I can get. Uh, worst case scenario, there's always another day uh, you know, day ahead. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. Um, you know, big moves down today early. Uh, a lot of names were um, collateral damage of Zoom. Zoom took down a lot of... Uh, the stay-at-home names early. You saw Chewy uh, get hit. You saw Docu uh, get hit. You saw uh, you know Netflix uh, this morning uh, getting hit. And, you know Peloton and everything as well. So uh, the rise in COVID cases now that you're seeing uh, in different parts of the world. It, yes, it's it's absolutely something to monitor 100%. But I, I think we're doing as as good as job as possible, at least here in the United States. Uh, even in New Jersey, we're still getting, what, 2,000 cases a day. But I, I think people have kind of gone to a, a great deal to kind of learn to live with it. Everybody's still uh, very, very, uh, you know, concerned and everybody is still uh, 
really, really on the ball of what potentially could happen. But people have gone with their lives. I, th I think that's the key. I think people uh, alter, you know, altered some things in their lives. But you know, people have, for the general have gone with their lives. Uh, I do believe with this whole you know holiday season, we, we probably will see a pretty big spike uh, in cases. But the most important part is that uh, the cases don't turn into ventilation and all that stuff. You know, I, I think most of us who are uh, vaccinated, you know, eventually, you know, you will get this thing, but hopefully uh, it will be a lot, a lot less uh, significant than what we saw in the first, I guess, three waves. Uh, as they like to call it. So you got some big moves down today. Uh, the one group that really stood out uh, for, for, for the day was financials. Uh, again, you see uh, the Goldman Sachs of the world, the Morgan Stanleys of the world creeping up above supply. That's a good, good thing. If you look at everything else, and, that, and that's probably the, one of the main focuses going into tomorrow, financials look pretty good for a day two run. When you look at everything else in technology, just because we had you know, a pretty significant sell-off, you know, back-to-back -back days. We had 1% yesterday, we were over 1% today. You know, th there's a lot of charts that are kind of, you know, that kind of damaged a little bit, not to the point of you have to sell everything. A lot of names are just in the middle of the ranges. So if you look, for example, on uh, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA got down to the 10-day moving average and bounced. You look at Amazon, for example, uh, you look at Amazon, for example, uh, got down to the 10-day moving average and bounce. You had Tesla, for example, got down to the 10-day moving average. Bounce. So a lot of names going into tomorrow, they're not longs, right? They're not longs, they're not shorts, they're just kind of in between. So when you have a scenario that is setting up that there's no clear bias going into tomorrow's session, that's the day, again, kind of day two, you wanna say, okay, you know what? Let me see what I can get. I'm not in any rush just because the market's open. I don't need to trade. Again, we don't trade because the market's open. We trade because of there's value. And if the stocks are sitting in the middle of their ranges, you have no, you're not, you're not in this for a 50-50 shot, right? You're not in this and say, well, the stock's either go or it's not. No, that's not the way it works. You wanna make sure you have a definitive edge uh, on every single trading day. And tomorrow is setting up especially the day before Thanksgiving into be kind of a toss up session. Yeah, I mean, is there names that I like on the long side and the short side? Yeah, I do. Um, I like this Abby. ABBV looks pretty decent. Um, Goldman, I obviously like. Some of the financials I like. Uh, even the stock like car. You guys remember this meme? I guess it turned into a meme. This whole, you know, Avis car rental that had explosion. Keep an eye on this channel. Again, it, this is a type of such a weird market that if it starts taking out this whole channel here, Maybe it could wake up, right? Maybe it could wake up. If you look at the downside, you know, there's some names that I'm definitely watching to the downside. Uh, NTES uh, stopped at the 10-day. We'll watch for confirmation. Uh, a name like Zen. You guys remember all these uh, all these plays uh, that we've been doing recently, these earnings lows? Well, first close below the earnings lows. So we're going to keep an eye on this thing. Uh, I'd like to see a stuff green to red. Uh, and maybe starts a multi-day, multi-week um, kind of selling, just like kind of what we're seeing right now in Beyond. Uh, it triggered yesterday uh, off the 7670s, got down under 74. I still like it. I think, you know, up, up a couple of bucks in this thing. Um, thing still looks like it wants to visit 70 bucks. And that's what happens with these earnings plays. They, they break the earnings low. Nobody cares about them. And they just kind of drift drift for like four or five days again look at you know look at the letter z before it had a a little bit of a you know a little bit of a, a bounce day right the stock sold off one two three four five six seven seven days in a row you have nearly two weeks uh worth of selling that's exactly what we expect well at least i expect i hope uh you see in beyond right maybe another four or five days of selling but that's exactly what we're kind of watching uh for the zen uh going into uh, tomorrow's session. I kind of like this Akamai, right? Uh, it never sold off. This actually looks pretty good here. I, you know, I like the top of the range here. So you could see here, you know, I'm not talking about the stocks that we usually talk about, the Teslas, the Facebooks, the Amazons of the world, because again, they're kind of not here, not there. So this is a perfect time to kind of decompress, be a better friend to yourself. Do you have to trade? Do you want to trade? Eh, it's, it's, you know, potato, potato. Yeah, you want to trade, especially when, you, when you're newer, but you don't have to trade. Again, that's the most important part. That's the discipline. And it's the money you save, not the money you make that's going to give you value uh, in your account. So let's talk about tomorrow. So again, I'm kind of 50-50. I don't know. You know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really feeling uh, tomorrow's session. Again, there's some names that I do like, but nothing crazy. Um, you know, Google got hit really aggressively today. Uh, 2921, if it builds below, can flush. Here is Google. Again, was very, very thin this morning. It was trading a four or $5 spread. 
It took out in the 29-21, went perfectly with this Bollinger Band uh, in the 28-80 area. It was, you know, it was down at one point, about 50. Uh, nice move there. Uh, uh, Micron never never got, you know, never got down uh, to this 83-60 level. It got, uh, got saved on an upgrade. Um, you had Qualcomm, not a big move. Uh, 78s. Uh, you know, 78, not one, not a big move at all. It was, it was, it felt like, it felt like the market was kind of going through the motion. It went down, you know, like a dollar. There was, there wasn't big moves. There wasn't any big moves here, uh, especially off the opening rips. Uh, SWKS kind of just sat there. This one went, unfortunately, pre-market that I, I didn't have a chance to. It just went straight down. Uh, aggressive pivot for experienced traders. 319 held twice. This thing got hit really, really hard. The problem is it went down so fast pre-market. I don't think anybody had a chance. It went down about 11, but again, I, don't, I didn't have a chance to trade this thing. Uh, Chewy straight down uh, 65, 50, 65. It builds below, can flush. Here was Chewy. All right, so he took out the 65, 50, 65, went all the way down uh, to 62. Again, the casualty of the stay-at-home names. This one, again, way too thin. It literally went from 617 to 605. It felt like on two shares, just way too thin. Impossible to even trade that thing. Uh, Doc, you got hit. Again, another example of the carnage that Zoom laid in his tracks. 242, uh, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Doc, you, right? Oops, D-O-C-O. Here was Doc, you. So it took out the 42, right? Took out the 42, went down to 337. Nice move there. Uh, in DocU, uh, AMAT, nothing huge. Uh, AMAT went down, you know, maybe a dollar and a half. Nothing, nothing big there. Uh, Tesla, boy, did I screw up Tesla. And here, here's a perfect example what I mean about how the market was. You could see there was no participation. So uh, 1154 was the pivot on, on Tesla. I shorted the second entry. It goes down like $3. And it was trading literally like a dollar, dollar and a half spread. I saw it stalled out. I took a little bit of flow, break even on the balance, went up another like five. And then next thing I know, it turned around. It sold off like 50 points. So, okay. I dropped the ball. I definitely dropped the ball on that one. Um, anyway, it is what it is. So uh, that's it. And then here's, you know, here's my message. I go, take the gas off, take volumes light, spreads are wide, patience. Okay, we've been uh, blessed with huge value. We don't need to trade because the market's open. That's exactly uh, what we talk about uh, every single day. Uh, you know, Tesla just got absolutely destroyed. Uh, Lucid never got down to the 4870. So look, it, it is what it is. What the hell happened to my, uh, oh, there it is. Uh, it is what it is. Um, you know, a slower day. I expect another slower day. Some opportunity tomorrow. But I, I think the key is always remember two things, guys. Premium hands only. And we trade because there's value. Guys, God bless. I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy uh, Thanksgiving. May God continue to bless you all. Stay he healthy. Stay happy. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.